Every time I try and stop, chat tell me they want more. Last episode, I got knocked out for the first time in my career. Removing the O, adding a 1 to my record. No more undefeated, no more undisputed. Ran to the tattoo artist to get my tattoo covered up. I am no longer undisputed in my mind. I'ma have to work back at that and it's having a hard toll on Therese mentally. My team immediately got me another match to try and get me back into the win column as soon as possible. This man is 1-4 in his last 5 fights, so this should be a fight that I can win. Going hard to prepare for this, we gonna train non-stop. We get into sparring and I immediately get hit with a hook that breaks my nose. So I am instantly trying to recover and cover up but i am having a hard time immediately not being able to breathe through the nose training is going terribly to make the situation worse i end up breaking a finger on my left hand i'm gonna have to cancel the fight now i'm gonna have to sit down and be unable to train for two months 12 weeks to be exact. I have been depressed after that loss and getting injured that I put on over 20 pounds in the last two months. I am not in fighting shape or fighting condition. I don't know where my career is headed. I begin firing my coach. I am not trying to see anybody that was attached to me when I lost. I got a clean house and start from scratch. I need to just get my mental straight before anything else. It takes me a couple more months before I'm mentally prepared to get back in the ring. After hiring my new coach, we jump right into the lab and start cooking up. I gotta lose all this weight. I gotta regain focus and momentum back into boxing because I don't know where my head's at. My manager and coach thought it'd be a good idea if I join the Santiago gym and fight in their tournament. So we hop on a flight and we head it to Mexico. First fighter I ever lost to was Mexican Marco Jimenez. So everybody I'm fighting here gonna be a Mexican fighter. So let's see how I compete against them. First round, I'm going up against Jay Brown. And in training, my trainers are not taking it easy on me. They gonna work me to the bone since I've been out of fighting for such a long time. We are pushing the punching bag with our hits. So we are looking to increase our power. We put on a lot of weight, so we had to turn that weight into some muscle and let's see how I'm moving now. Let's see how good we doing. I'm punching this punching bag. It's moving very well. I'm looking loose and I'm feeling strong. Let's see how we can compete against Jay Brown in this fight. First time being in a ring in such a long time. I'm trying to get loose, but I'm not trying to do too much. I am backpedaling most of the first round, so that's all you can expect out of me, trying to get comfortable in the ring. There's a such thing as ring rust. That's why that word exists, and I have it. So we start getting into the thick of it, exchanging blows back and forth. It's a hot day out here in Mexico. He start gassing out early. I start gassing out. My conditioning is bad, but this punch to his gut had his legs wobbling so I just started emptying the tank before the end of the first round and he ultimately stumbles over let's go man going down in the first round I like that can he be put away immediately a first round knockout in my first return fight of course life ain't gonna be that easy round two i'm looking to make more of the same happen but he come out way more aggressive just constantly swinging even if it's at air when i get inside i decide to start clinching because he's being way too aggressive he is being way too aggressive i clinch him to slow down his punching speed and i start letting some shots go inside i saw him quiver at the last round when i hit him with a body shot so i decide to do more of that more body shots bang bang Come on, man, he tumbles over. Eventually, we are going to knock this man out, and I'm liking the confidence we showing, even though we haven't been in the ring in so long. Fast forward to round four. He unloading his shots, but he ain't got no legs up under him after the knockdown in the first two rounds. I took his energy from him immediately, which led to him ultimately having a bad fight throughout the rest of it. Powerful left hook knocks him over for the third time in this fight and that heart he has got him back to his feet once again bro why won't you just stay down 
hook to that body. Bang, another hook, and he quivers over again. But he gets up for the fourth time in this fight. Ultimately, there is not enough time left. He makes it to decision. I don't get rewarded with a knockout victory, but it was a convincing victory. I advance to the next round. I'm going up against T. Stewart. So, we back in the lab again to train. T. Stewart, I don't know much about him, but what I do know, I need to work on my combos. I was looking a little sloppy, so coach is all over my head about tightening up my movement, tightening up my punches thrown. I need to get comfy back in the ring. So, our plan this fight is to punch in bunches let's string some combos together as we doing on a heavy bag last training was about pushing a heavy bag this one is about comboing on it letting them hands move freely just throwing them shots and letting it go as y'all can see where we at we in mexico we trying to get cozy back in the ring before we go back to america and start climbing the charts again i am only 21 years old i still got my whole career ahead of me first round i'm tagging them and moving stick and moving one twos and step back i am way faster than this opponent i got here so combo and him he basically standing still like he a punching bag it's so easy to work this was beautiful training this is why i got a new coach he properly prepared me for this because he is hitting like a punching bag and i am just having a punch and move that's all i gotta do easy tag and move easy tagging them and moving just like i did with the punching bag in training beautiful start breaking him down over time and he can't handle the pressure of these shots flying in from all angles combos on combos man <laughs> now ref start count again let's see if this guy got heart to keep getting back up off the mat he's up at five He's showing heart too, but he ain't got that much heart because he is weak again. And I start attacking a body curled over. Stop getting up, please. Just stop getting up. Seven, eight, nine. What? They are showing a lot of effort and heart over here in Mexico. These fighters. He's an American-born fighter, but nonetheless, he over here in Mexico, and he is getting back up and giving himself chances. He ain't doing no damage. I'm backing myself into a corner. I am just having free reign with this man. That straight punch over the top stuns him, and this left hook sends him to the mat. Stop standing back up and stay down. Knock down. Down for the third time in this fight will he make it back up ultimately he does not i advance to the final round of this tournament who will i be going up against in this final round of this mexican tournament i completely dominate my bracket knock both opponents down seven times combined what will i do in the final round I decide to spectate my opponents to see who got who better, to see what they can offer, to see what I'm expecting. I got time before the next fight. I'm usually training, but this the finale. I might as well see what my opponents are like. And this guy in the purple is strong and tall. He is looking like a monster. He is throwing punch after punch. Easily curled this guy in the second round. But he gets up. But he immediately jumps all over him again and start throwing more power shots. He is a tall, scary figure with all his strength and his punches. Oh my goodness. And this is who I got to fight in the final round of the tournament. I see why he making it here. Nine. Okay, he got up at nine. Maybe I won't be fighting that guy. Bang, 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 hook straight. Oh my goodness, yeah, I'm definitely fighting this guy in the purple. He a monster. <laughs> this guy pretty scary and strong, so I don't know what am I going to get myself into, but let's see. Now that we know his fighting style is to be super strong and aggressive, we are fighting from the outside, and we are going to slow down his aggression. Game plan is to frustrate my opponent to the best of my abilities. Jenkins versus Garcia. Let's see what they have to offer here. This guy is taller than me, stronger than me. I have the speed advantage, so we're going to use our speed. 
to our advantage. Fight smarter, not harder. Obviously, I want to fill out to see his level of aggression, his strength. So, I'm fighting from the outside, taking it very simple. I'm not trying to do too much. We don't need to do too much damage. We just need to win the round. So, I connect on a counter punch. And I'm fighting on the outside, keeping my feet active, not letting him just stand in front of me and throw shots back to back like he did against the other opponent. Catching him when he throwing too many shots and overextending himself. Into the second round, he comes out toying with me, and now he letting shots go. But like I'm saying, I'm staying active. I'm not planting my feet for nothing. We are staying on the move. Hey, hey, good counter punch and then back out. I'm not even trying to double up on anything. I'm throwing one shots and move. I am throwing one shot and move. This is totally different than how I handle my other opponent. I was all about combos last fight. This fight, I'm all about accurate shots and getting out of there. Because I can't go blow for blow with this gentleman. He is throwing air. Look at it. He just swinging. He is throwing shots. Whoa. He tried to take my head off. I had to clinch him. Look at this. He launches at me with a hook. I duck it and ultimately get a clinch. But every time I get in close, he is throwing so many shots back to back to back. I cannot stand in his face for too long. But as the rounds go on, he starts slowing down. He stopped throwing as rapidly as he was early in the fight. So I see that my game plan is working. And I see that it's messing with him mentally. It's very frustrating trying to fight somebody that's constantly running. And you feel like you have to chase them. And once you catch them, you're hitting air. So it frustrates anybody dealing with a fighter like this. And then once you actually had a fighter cornered, I just clinch. So you got in close for nothing because I'm going to just grab you and hang on to you for dear life like Floyd Mayweather used to. But anyway, now that we here, at the end of this round, I said, you know what? Let's stand in a pocket and go blow for blow. We only got a couple seconds left. I gassed myself out. But me standing blow for blow was actually a bad idea because he ended up cutting me on my face with one of his hooks. This man is dangerous. Even for the couple of seconds I stood in a pocket with him, I regretted it because now I'm bleeding all over the ring. Listen, man, I'm still sticking to that game plan of fighting outside as he do a jumping hook. He is so frustrated. He want to rip my head off my shoulders, and I am not letting him. Every time he steps forward, that straight, he throws another one. He is desperate and impatient. That is how I know my game plan is frustrating my opponent. Look at the blood all over my face. All from standing in a pocket. That is a lesson learned. Don't stand in a pocket with him. I ultimately go for the knockout victory here. But I can't wear him down. These punches that I'm throwing are not hitting him hard enough to do any real damage. I tried to go blow for blow with him in the final round. As you can see, he is not budging. He's still standing tall, but his production output of punches has slowed down, and I'm clinching as I'm unloading shots to the body. I left it all in the ring here. I am not disappointed with my performance at all. I threw everything I had and I win this Santiago tournament, bringing home the $5,000 cash prize. This was an amazing idea after my loss.